Freelancing roles within machine learning is not something that we hear about within our machine learning community. We focus a lot more on full-time jobs in companies, especially for machine learning engineering roles, but we don't often focus on freelancing roles. And that's actually pretty strange because there is a growing community of people who are stepping up and looking into these freelancing roles within ML. And there's also a growing demand from the industry side as well, looking to hire freelancers and contractors for ML. So it only makes sense that we actually look at this seriously. And that's exactly what I will be talking about in today's video. Hey guys, I'm Smitha and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things AI and machine learning related. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how exactly you guys can go about becoming a freelancer within machine learning. How can you land your first client and where can you actually look to get clients and companies to work with you as a machine learning engineer or as a data scientist? Uh, in within the ML space. And this is going to come a lot from my own personal experience with freelancing as well that I've done extensively. I think that one of the first barriers which stops a lot of people from getting into freelancing within machine learning is they think that you have to be an expert in machine learning in order to become a freelancer, to work with certain companies, etc. And that's honestly not the case. Of course, it definitely helps to have a very high level of knowledge in a lot of ML related tools and technologies when you're working with these companies. But the biggest thing I found which helps you to prepare to become a freelancer in machine learning is actually building end to end machine learning projects. Those really help to augment your knowledge and really help to build your knowledge and get you prepared to work with companies as a freelancing machine learning engineer because most of the time when you're working with companies, you're helping them implement either for the first time, you're helping them implement machine learning into their services and products, or you're trying to help them build some sort of pipeline out of something which already exists out of existing data. As a freelancing machine learning engineer, it's really important that you're aware of what your client slash company that you're working with is looking for. And it helps if you have some sort of domain knowledge as well, that is a huge asset coming in. But let's look at some of the top reasons why companies hire freelancing machine learning engineers and what exactly is the use case they hire them for. So the first reason and most well-known use case is to implement a real-time chatbot agent. So this is one of the most popular reasons why companies get uh, machine learning engineers to help them to implement this. And secondly, it is customer recommendation systems. So that is also super important for a lot of companies as well. And thirdly, it is customer churn modeling. At fourth, we have dynamic pricing implementation. So implementing of pricing, uh, dynamic pricing for products. That's also a really good use case. Fifth, we have fraud detection, and that is a pretty popular use case as well. And the sixth one, we have image recognition and classification. So these are some really popular use cases for uh, freelance machine learning engineers to help imp implement these kind of use cases within companies. So if you are planning on approaching companies as a freelancing machine learning engineer, it could be great if you could show some sort of background or domain knowledge within these uh, solutions. Next, let's talk about landing your first client as a freelance machine learning engineer. So the first client or the first company that you get to work with, that is going to be the hardest company to acquire because getting your first client means that you have overcome a lot of competition which exists amongst the industry. So when you're starting out as a freelancer, you need to build some sort of credibility. You need to be well known for what you're doing. So if you're overcoming that and getting your first client, that will be the hardest client to get. And it should be getting easier as you move forward, as you gain experience, as you gain credibility within the space. So how can you go about landing that first client or company to work with? How can you go about landing that first job as a freelance ML engineer? So there are a lot of websites that you can look at. Uh, Toptal is one of them. It's super well known for these type of highly technical roles and it already has quite a lot of data scientists and ML engineers 
who are starting off there as well. Uh, that's one of them. And then there is something called Use Brain Trust. So that is also a highly technical platform which has anything from ML engineers and blockchain developers on there. So that's one of them. And next, you can also look at some common job finding websites, for example, angel.co, which is a website for startups to advertise jobs. But oftentimes we also see contract uh, works there as well. So uh, short term contracts are there and th those can be excellent freelancing roles as well. In addition to all of that, you have to be extremely proactive in order to get clients when you're freelancing as an ML engineer. And it really helps to know where exactly your clients are positioned or who your clients are going to be. So it helps to actually have a really solid LinkedIn profile. If you are someone who is consistently posting on LinkedIn or you have gained a pretty decent following on LinkedIn and people know you as someone who is a machine learning engineer who has some sort of expertise, it is super helpful. And that way you're able to actually reach out to companies on LinkedIn as a freelancer within ML and you're actually able to approach them and perhaps even land them as your client. But that definitely involves you doing your own market research. And sometimes you would have to approach companies and give it a shot and try to understand what what their needs are and how can you help them to implement ML within their existing products, existing services. So that is where you as a machine learning engineer would come in. To take your freelancing profile to the next level, aside from having a really strong LinkedIn profile, it really helps to have your own website as well, because that will make you look way more professional where you have all of your projects on your website, explaining exactly what you do. And this is something where companies can easily reach out to you. So that is a great thing to consider as well. And that is something that you can do if you really want to establish your credibility uh, as well. That being said, there are definitely quite a lot of difficulties associated with freelance as an ML engineer that you wouldn't necessarily have to face if you're doing a full-time job as an ML engineer. You wouldn't have to go out and find clients and deal with the entire aspect of that as a freelancer, but there are a lot of upsides as well. So as a freelancer, you get to decide what type of projects you want to work on, who you want to work with, what type of companies you want to work with. And at the same time, if you are a successful freelancer, you're definitely making a lot more than what a machine learning engineer at a company would be making because successful freelancers can charge anywhere from $200 an hour up to $500 an hour. So that is definitely something that a lot of people look out for. And that's also one of the biggest motivating factors for people to get into freelancing in machine learning. Hope you guys found this video helpful on trying to understand how exactly you can become a freelancer within ML. Let me know what you guys thought about this video. Thank you guys for watching and see you in my next video.